have one question. In the Surah Al Imran, verse 50, it says to follow the teachings of Jesus. Why doesn't anyone do this? Can you mention your name, sister, please? Chastity. Sister asked a question that the Quran says in Surah Imran, chapter 3, verse number 50, that we have to follow the teachings of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. And there are many verses which say that we have to believe in Jesus, peace be upon him. Sister, let me clarify that Islam is the only non-Christian faith which makes it an article of faith to believe in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. No Muslim is a Muslim if he does not believe in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. We believe that he was one of the mightiest messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We believe that he was the Messiah translated Christ. We believe that he was born miraculously without any male intervention, which many modern Christians today do not believe. We believe that he gave life to the dead with God's permission. We believe that he healed those born blind and lepers with God's permission. The Christian and the Muslim sister, we are going together. But one may ask, where is the parting of ways? The parting of ways is, sister, that many Christians, they say that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he claimed divinity. He said that he was almighty God. If you read the Bible, sister, there is not a single unequivocal statement. In the complete Bible, where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, himself says that I am God, always says worship me. If any Christian can point out a single unequivocal statement, a single unambiguous statement in the complete Bible, where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, himself says that I am God, or where he says, worship me, I am ready to accept Christianity today. I am not speaking on behalf of my other Muslim brothers. In fact, if you read the Bible, it's mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 14, verse number 28, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, my father is greater than I. Gospel of John, chapter number 10, verse number 29, my father is greater than all. Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 12, verse number 28, I cast out devil with the spirit of God. Gospel of Luke, chapter number 11, verse number 20, I cast out devil with the finger of God. Gospel of John, chapter number 5, verse number 30, I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just, for I seek not my will, but the will of Almighty God. <laughs> but the will of my father. Anyone who says that I followed not my will, but the will of Almighty God, he's a Muslim. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he's a Muslim. He never claimed divinity. And it's clearly mentioned in the book of Acts, chapter number 2, verse number 22. E men of Israel, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God amongst you by wonders and miracles and signs which God did by him, and you are witness to it. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God amongst you by wonders and miracles which God did by him and you witness to it. So we believe that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he was one of the mightiest messengers of God, but he was not God. So here we differ. As far as the teachings are concerned, your basic question was that Quran says we have to follow the teachings of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. When Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, came in this world, he was only sent for the Jews. Only for Bani Israel. The Quran says clearly in Surah Saf, chapter number 61, verse number 6, that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, came as a messenger to the Bani Israel. It's mentioned in Surah Al Imran, chapter number 3, verse 49, that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was sent only for the Bani Israel. It's mentioned in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 10, verse number 5 and 6, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he says, Go ye not into the way of the Gentiles. Who are the Gentiles? Non-Jews, Hindus, Muslims. Go ye not in the way of the Gentiles. Enter ye not into the city of the Samaritans, but rather go to the house of the Lordship of Israel. And a similar message is repeated in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 15, verse number 24. He says to the apostles that I have been sent not but to the Lordship of the house of Israel. So Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was sent only for the Bani Israel. And his message was supposed to be followed only for a particular time period. That's what the Bible says, that's what the Quran says. In spite of this, sister, if you read the Bible, what Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says, if you analyze, it's mentioned in the Gospel of Luke, that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he was circumcised on the eighth day. 
we Muslims, mashallah, we are circumcised. Majority of the Christians aren't circumcised. So if you say that following the teachings of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, makes you a Christian, then I like to say that I am more Christian than the Christian themselves. It is mentioned in the Bible. In the book of Ephesians, chapter number 5, verse number 18, that be not drunk. It's mentioned in the book of Proverbs, chapter number 20, verse number 1, that wine is a mocker. We Muslims, we don't drink alcohol. Quran says in Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 90, alcohol is haram, we don't touch it. We don't touch it as a whole. The Muslims are the biggest community of teetotalers. So according to the Bible, you should not have alcohol. It's mentioned in the Bible that you should not have pork in several places. It's mentioned in the book of Leviticus, chapter number 11, verse number 7 and 8. It's mentioned in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 14, verse number 8. In the book of Isaiah, chapter number 65, verse number 2 to 5, no less than five places that you should not have pork. We Muslims, we don't have pork. But majority of the Christians, they have pork. So if Christian means a person who follows the teachings of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, we Muslims are more Christian than the Christians themselves. I can go on and on. When Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was asked that which is the first of the commandments, he mentioned in the Gospel of Mark, chapter number 12, verse number 29, he said, Shama Israelo Adnaihino Adnaihad. It's a Hebrew quotation which means, Your O Israel, the Lord, our God, is one Lord. We Muslims, mashallah, we believe in none but one God. Majority of the Christians, they believe in Trinity. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. So if you say Christian means the person who follows the teachings of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, we Muslims are more Christian than the Christian themselves. And you can refer to my video cassette, similarities between Islam and Christianity, which will give you more details that we are following more of the Bibles, the teachings of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, than the Christian themselves. Hope that answers the question, sister. May I request our questioners to kindly state their names and profession so that we get a clear context with what background they are asking their question and Zakir can, uh, inshallah, give you a more appropriate response. And uh, we would request our volunteers to kindly see that very courteously the non-Muslim brothers and sisters are given the first preference. May I put this too also in context? The objective is the brothers, this is an open question answer session and you can feel free to ask any questions on the topic of the day and you are totally free to criticize Islam, attack Islam, if Dr. Zakir is speaking anything which is wrong or not speaking appropriate to the context of peace or what the message of Islam states and it is against the basic humanity, feel free to ask him. You are under our full protection and we appreciate a person who would criticize us openly in a context like this than a person who would be against and feel bad in the heart and not come out in the open about what we feel we want you to come out in the open ask questions criticize attack dr zakir this is your opportunity please don't miss it now this is your opportunity for the next one hour feel free to ask question yes brother assalamu alaikum my name is ludovic bonilla i am french non-muslim and uh, i am traveling eight months in india I uh, am 18 years old. I compelled my 12 uh, in June. And so, uh, inshallah, if you, you agree, I will meet you in private. But now uh, I just would like to ask you um, about the Jews. Uh, maybe if I am not wrong, you said that uh, it is written in the Quran that Jews and pious are the uh, strength, uh, strong enemies uh, of believers, Muslim believers, Muslim. And uh, I would like to know how this verse can favorize peace in, uh, in uh, humankind uh, when we see the troubles between Palestine and Israel, uh, how some Muslim and some Jews can uh, cannot be uh, cannot misunderstand this verse 
because maybe it can uh, provoke uh, it can provoke some uh, mis misinterpretation or if it's written early that uh, Jews and Muslims have to be enemies. Well, that's a very good question. That he said, I said in my speech, and according to the verse of the Quran of Surah Maida, chapter 5, verse 32, which says that strongest in enmity to the Muslims would be the Jews and the pagans, and the closest in love would be the Christians. So if they wanted to create enmity when they say that the Jews and the Muslims should fight, the Quran doesn't say Jews and the Muslims should fight. The Quran says strongest in enmity to the Muslims, to the believers, will be Jews. It does not say that Muslims should fight with the Jews. It doesn't say that. But it says that the Jews, by nature as a whole, they'll be against Muslims. And I told in my lecture, there are many Jews who accept Islam. There are many Jews who are good to Muslims. But as a whole, as a whole, if you take Jews as a whole and the Christians as a whole, the Christians are closer than the Jews as a whole. This is a fact. For example, the Quran says that the Jews are intelligent also. So that's a fact. If they're intelligent, they're intelligent. That doesn't mean that it hides the fact. And the Quran also says that they will be as a whole a staunchest enemy. So this is one of the falsification tests. That today, if you want to prove the Quran wrong, if the Jews, the Jews get together, all of them, and they decide, let us prove the Quran wrong. At least for three, four years, we will be better than the Christians. Let's stop the war of Palestine. You know the Palestinians? The Jews were kicked out by Hitler. Hitler insinuated six million Jews. He kicked them out of Germany. The Arabs, the Palestinians, they do Alan was Alan. Come with open arms. After a few years, they are kicked out of the home. Imagine someone gives a traveler his home to live, and the traveler kicks him out of his home, and he's shouting that he has taken my house, and you're calling them terrorists. So what they have to do is let's get together and solve this problem. What are the problem is? Today, America is controlled by the Jews. Whether it be the banks, whether it be the money, whether it be the power. According to the American survey, no one can become a president of USA without walking the star of David. So the Jews are a minority, less than 5% in America. But they're controlling the economy, they're controlling America. Fine? So if they're controlling America, let all of this, let's solve the problem of Palestine, let's solve the American problem. Not forever, few years. Four, five years only. And the problem is solved. So we aren't telling that the Muslims should fight with the Jews. In fact, the Quran says, even if your enemy wants peace, several places, even if they come to fight you, it's mentioned in Surah Anfal, in the battle, if they want peace, give it to them. So Quran is always for peace. Quran is always encouraging them. But if a person does not want peace to prevail, what can we do? Islam is a religion of peace. It wants peace, but it even mentions facts. That means we have to be careful of the Jews, not that we have to fight them, unless they come and fight with you. That's a different thing. Imagine what's happening in Palestine, what's happening in other parts of the world. So brother, for peace to prevail, you have to follow the guidance of the Quran and live harmoniously rather than be enemies. The Quran doesn't say that Jews should be enemies, but they will be saying. Hope that answers the question.